I think this has all been in question, and I, I think most of us are thinking it. Is the NBA doing enough with officiating this year, uh, just in general? And uh, Sage Steele from ESPN sat down with Adam Silver to talk about the officiating ahead of the All-Star break, just for Adam Silver to kind of iron out some issues, some things that have been happening, specifically with the Lakers game uh, and some of the bad calls they've had on the Lakers for the past couple of past couple of years, uh, past, past, past couple of games. So um, when – when Silver was specifically asked about what are the consequences for the referees, he went on to say this. Uh, we don't publicize discipline for officials. We don't think that would be appropriate. Um, he went on to say, but their assignments are affected by the quality of their calls. Whether or not they progress into the playoffs and then, and then round by round is impacted by accuracy of their calls and their demeanor on the floor. So there's a system for overseeing and making those adjustments about officiating, but more, uh, but more to your earlier point about getting the calls right, that's, a, that's again, not a new issue. So getting the calls right, right is, of course, is an issue. So basically what Silver is saying is the, the refs are, are penalized based on how many top or premier games they get. Now, that one, two, and drive for the, ref, the ref, uh, official, officials to uh, uh, official a top game is the same thing as an athlete being there. So uh, I guess the reward is... Hey, look! I'm just not going out here getting the, you know, getting the, I don't know, the um, uh, uh, Orlando, Orlando and and Wizards every night, right? Uh, Wizards are actually doing all right, but Orlando games every night. They're getting quality games that are meaningful games um, that kind of gives them the juices to officiate, you know, in these games. So he's basically saying then the playoffs, etc. So these top premier games, you know, games uh, they get uh, stripped from. Uh, he also, I like what he said, uh, the, the accuracy of their calls and their demeanor on the floor. Demeanor is huge because with so many cameras and so many fans looking, the smallest thing, who you relate to, who you grew up with, is analyzed. So they're going to analyze your behavior as well, too, that one thing can go off that you don't like a player, you don't like a coach, you don't like a team. Um, these are things that they do analyze. So uh, this is kind of his system. He said publicly, no. Now, the question is, if we publicly berate players or we publicly judge players based on their activities, should we do the same exact thing for the officials? Um, the officials who are supposed to be the purity, the integrity, the, the judge of the basketball game, do we protect the officials? And, and I say that because the challenge that I'm kind of I'm seeing is I do think that Officials should respond publicly to getting the calls right. If we hold players to a standard and we hold them accountable for everything they say they do in their everyday lives, I think that there has to be some type of public response to what's happening. Now, the the I like the fact that the the referees players union does have an official page. I do think some of the the repercussions should be publicized. Even if the referees don't speak or say anything, we should know that there's consequences for it, just like players get fined for saying something about the officiating. Um, I understand Silver wants to protect the referees, but the more you protect the referees, the more their egos get bigger. Because the biggest problem with the referee is not is is not getting a call wrong, is getting a call wrong, and then and then not overturning it because it's ego. I think there should be a centralized unit, every NBA. Uh, every NBA game that allows them to make or change rulings in the game if they see fit. Um, I, 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 to the point where if it's that critical, they should award the team the ball or a free throw or a possession or something to, you know, untimed possession or something to give them back, give them, give them it back, uh, uh, them back because the referees make quite a bit of mistakes. Now, of course, there can be ways to iron that out, um, but uh, I don't want to extend the game longer than it needs to be. But the whole system is rigged. And I, I, one particular game, um, they talked about, he said, I know some people, Silver went on to say, I know some people in that particular call, uh, that in that particular call you mentioned in the Celtics-Lakers game, were upset that there was no opportunity for replay. Many focus on many people focused on the coach not having another challenge. But remember, in, in our league, you can't challenge a non-call. There's a lot of difficulty there when you get it into a non-call. You can suggest every moment of the game is a non-call when the call isn't being made in any way. Now, I think it was Jeff Van Gutty said, and both him and Mark Jackson were, were doing this game, and they said something very important. If you challenge the call and you win the call, you should get your challenge back. But if you challenge the call and you win the call, 
and it, you don't get your challenge back. You keep your timeout. But if you challenge the call and you lose the call, you lose a challenge and timeout. I just don't get why they don't give a challenge back. If you if you basically correct the refs on what they made a mistake on and you get the call, why would you revoke the challenge and not give them the challenge back? That's a huge issue in the replay and the challenging system. I don't think he gets that. Oh, well, you challenged. That's your only time to challenge the refs. <laughs> no, give them the challenge back. Because the problem at the end of the game wasn't that – it was a non it was a non call play. It was the fact that they didn't have a challenge to challenge the play. And if they would if they were able to challenge it, then they could challenge the actual play within that time frame or within that possession. So and he's talking about fifteen how far do you go back fifteen seconds? Typically all challenges are within the same possession. So all you have to do is a possession possession, you don't have to go back X amount of time. Um if you see something that impacts the game as well too, that call can come down like from New York or a centralized Unit that works every single basketball game in the uh, 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 every night, and what they do is they just pretty much dictate. Um, you know, they 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 have their eyes and ears out there, and they come down and work in conjunction with the head ref to say, "Hey, look, this is something to look at. Let's stop play uh, if it's that critical." So uh, maybe it's in the last two minutes that New York is with each and in, in uh, there each game. You know, if they see something or see an issue or whatever when it comes to the calls, they bring it up to the referees. So, um, yeah, Silver went on to talk about multiple things. Um, he talked about uh, load management, the NBA season. I do think the NBA season should be shortened. Um, you know, if not, then, hey, hey I, actually, I, I don't think the game, NBA season should be shortened. Um, actually, I can't say that. I, 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 would, I, would, I would shorten the NBA season maybe to, you know, 70 games, nothing, nothing less than, like, you know, nothing less than, nothing less, nothing less than 60, I think 12 games less gives people a little bit more of a summer break. The challenge is you still have A2 games and then you extend the playoffs. So now, you know, instead of ending in, in May or you're ending in late June uh, and they ramp back up in, you know, almost uh, almost uh, uh, September, you know, September. So it's really not tr- a true break. But, I mean, it's, hey, look, they're professionals. You know, normal people don't get breaks, so I get it. Um, well, I mean, I think 70 will be a good game since you are extending extending the playoffs and adding a play adding playing games. Um, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to them extending the extending the playoffs. Um, I mean, I, 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 making it uh, less games. So um, yeah, it will be interesting to see what happens uh, as as you know the officiating starts to get tighter in the season. The officiating has been really bad. I think the the refs now their egos being challenged on the calls that they make and 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 it's it's harmful to them. But we'll see what happens and uh, I look forward to uh, the All Star break. I'm excited for it. Um, NBA All Star break. So I'm like, I'm a I'm a football head, football diehard at heart. I love basketball just as much as well too. But uh, the NBA does it right when it comes to the All Star break and 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 their league. Of course, the amount of players you know make it that way. But I'm looking for, I'm really looking forward to the All Star break.